And let's um let's lift our hands. Everybody, everybody with their hands. Come on. When was the last time you held them up so long that they hurt? And just let the Holy Spirit fill you. When was the last time you waited until you had goosebumps? Because you could feel him inside of you. Too often we do this on our own strength. Tonight, let's um, let's just trust in Him. Let's just pray. God, 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 thank you. We wait on you tonight, Lord. Fill us tonight, Lord, with your, with your spirit. Fill us tonight with your power. God, I pray this would be a celebration of you and everything you've done for us. God, we thank you you didn't send Jesus to die on the cross so we could just live a sinless life, but you rose him from the dead so he could walk with us and teach us, and guide us, and love us. God, tonight we pray that you would move in this place. God, I pray that this would be, this just wouldn't be us going through emotions, but we would learn something new, and we would leave better than the way we came. God, 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 we love you, Lord. God, I thank you for every person here with their arms raised. God, I pray that tonight you would reveal something to them. God, change them in their absolute inner core. Break them for your cause tonight, God. God, tonight we give you all the glory and all the honor. And everybody said with one heart. Amen. Amen. Unreal. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, give it up for the band. Cool. So it's, um, it feels weird to say it's cool to be back because I'm here every week, but... It's cool to be back. Um, first of all, I just want to I just want to honour um, Josh and Georgie. These guys are just um, the real deal. Um, I'm honoured to say I call them. Yeah, come on, let's let's give them a huge hand. You, we don't we don't really see it because we're here in our own little Oxford Falls bubble each week. But this thing is worldwide, and um, like Josh said before, the the response at the um, at the Here We Go conference in Hawaii is no real surprise to me. This guy is, well, Josh and Georgie, sorry, uh, absolute trailblazers. Before, before change, there was no young adults ministry in Australia. It just didn't exist. Um, there was life at the bridge, if anyone remembers that. And that was, yeah, it was life at the bridge. Um, but from, from the absolute passion and the, the hard work and the sacrifice and I mean I I've, I've know the sacrifice these guys have gone through um, to turn up each week and, and the, the meetings in, in between the weeks so that you guys can live the life you were created to live is, is just phenomenal and um, I think we should just give them one huge hand and bless them so, um, so bless them when you see them encourage them um, I know they get too many negative emails and not enough good ones. So when you get the, when they hit the success, when something good happens, when God blesses you, send them an email then as well. Let's not, let's not be bearers of bad news, but let's be bringers of good news. Amen? Cool. So let's get into it. So tonight, I want to speak about reaching people. This month is about reaching out. I'm going to speak about reaching people. So um, evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is something that's real close to my heart. It's something I feel is, is our calling. It's, um, it's something that I feel that is, is my calling. I'm, I'm so passionate about it. I believe that your, your passion determines your purpose. And I'm passionate about seeing people saved. Um, I'm so passionate about seeing people set free and walking with Jesus. Tonight I pray that you would catch this passion and, um, and you would leave this place as an, as an, an evangelist and not just a Christian. We've, um, like I said before, when was the last time you got uncomfortable? When was the last time you spoke to someone on the bus? 
When was the last time you spoke to someone at work? When was the last time you prayed for that person who's been sick week after week at work? That's evangelism. I want to say real quick that um, evangelism um, in today's world is unfortunately a, a controversial topic. Uh, all you've got to do is look at the media response to events like Presence and Hillsong conferences to see the way the world views evangelism, that it's slightly different to the way Jesus sees it. Um, why? It, it begs the question. Um, it, it's, I, know, like, I mean, we know why. It's because it represents the church actually trying to do something, that we're not just having a party every week. We're actually trying to, to convert people. And I'm serious, we actually are trying to convert people from a life of sin to a life of freedom. We're not trying to brainwash people and convert them for the sake of getting their money, but we're actually passionate about seeing them set free. You've got to have a heart for that. You've got to understand that. If you're not passionate, if you think that it is just about converting people for the sake of converting people, then that's why it's not effective. That's why it seems weird. That's why it's controversial. We've got to be actually, actually passionate about seeing people come to know God. The reason why the society doesn't like it is because we, they think that it's us messing with people's free will. Yeah. Funny thing is, God created free will. It's, it's kind of coincidence, I think, that um, they think we're trying to mess with something that God's created. I want you to cast your mind back. Were you forced into believing Jesus? Were you coerced into believing that Jesus died for you? Or was it an experience? I want you to think back right now, how did you come to church for the first time? So if we're going to be a generation that tries to bridge the gap of an unchurched generation where evangelism went out the window because we're trying to be normal and fit in, we've got to get more radical. The 80s was full of revivals and then we went to this area of the 90s and where we tried to become culturally relevant. And, and we did, we did a good job, we got some really cool churches, but we just don't see the crusades anymore. We don't see the street preaching anymore. We don't see people getting saved in the streets anymore. It's, it's not okay to see one or two people a fortnight here getting saved. It's not okay that there's empty seats in this place. We all know people that need to know Jesus. Why aren't we telling them? I'm not here to make you feel bad. Don't get me wrong. We're going to get into some cool stuff. But I'm just these are thoughts that have been in my head the last week. These are questions we've got to ask ourselves, otherwise it'll always remain that weird little thing that we're supposed to do. So evangelism, it's not a crusade. It's not a preacher from another country with a cool testimony. It's not an outreach night. It's not a type of message. It's not a department of a church. Evangelism is our mandate. I want you to write that down if you've got a notepad and write it in big letters. Evangelism is our mandate. It's our mission. It's our calling. And in 2 Timothy, it says, um, it says this, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that in Christ Jesus and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trustable, reliable men who will be qualified to teach others. This is really cool because this is Paul teaching Timothy to go and teach other people what he's taught him. That's evangelism. Yeah? Teaching people, discipleship teaching them what you've been taught. You have all know something. You all know the truth. You've all been taught it by someone. We've got to teach it to other people. What's the point of holding it to ourselves? What's the point of carrying around Jesus in your back pocket? We've got to get out of our comfort zone and, um, and teach people. Am I preaching to someone tonight? Yeah. Come on. Let's get, let's get passionate. So let's read Matthew 28. The Great Commission. I know we've all read this, but it obviously makes sense with tonight. So Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This was the last order given to us by Jesus, to teach people how to be disciples. Like I said before, this is true evangelism. I want you to write down evangelism is discipleship. They're not two separate things. 